Hey guys, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. As you can see, I am again neck deep in my Plague City. It's been a while since I've worked on this. In the last episode, I got like half of the buildings to this point where they were all finished with uh, all the pieces, the different like add-ons, the, the gluing of the sand and the rubble and all that. But I'd only done like half of them. And I had to do the other half, which meant, you know, a bunch of building and then a bunch of messy, just me messy, messy work that disrupts the whole studio. It wasn't the kind of thing that I could just do in between other things. It really, really takes over my build space. Yesterday, I spent the day building another bunch of these ruins. I finished off this two-piece tower, this big structure here, and a couple more of these little scatter pieces. I can now move on to starting the painting process. So I have a few basic ideas, but I gotta start out with just some test pieces. I have been planning all along to basically rattle can spray paint these and do probably some oil washes on them to weather them. Even though spray painting is going to be a simple process, there's, I really don't know the best way to approach it if I should prime them in like a white, a gray, a black, do some highlights, then some washes. Brown, not really sure, but I was in Lowe's yesterday and I happened to see this multicolor textured spray paint. It's got this really fine kind of, you know, rusty sand like finish. This might actually work really well. I was also originally going to put some texture paste like this stuff all over them to give them this sort of grit, but I think now I don't actually have to. But I still don't know the best way to prime them. Can this go on directly? It probably can, uh, but how is it going to look? Should it go over black, over white, over brown, over flat red primer? What's going to look the most like a rusty old ruined industrial complex? Thankfully, I have numerous extra pieces. So I'm going to prime out a bunch of these and uh, see which one works best with this, uh, with this texture stuff here. Thanks to blistering hot sun, these are dry enough to take a quick peek at and make some assessments. None of them turned out quite as I expected, to be honest. Now, first up is the plain one where it just went directly onto the plastic. When it was going on, it looked really clear and cloudy and strange, but actually once it dried, it looks pretty darn good. And surprisingly, uh, it has stuck really well. I'm impressed with how well this is bonded. And this looks pretty good. I don't love all the gray stuff showing through. And also this is a pretty expensive spray paint to cover everything with and kind of tricky to apply because like I said, it, it's hard to see what you're doing with it. It's, it. it's really a strange paint. So moving on to the uh, white primer, this one is just a no. I think this is a no-go. It's not really anything to write home about. I don't really love it. I mean, I, I am kind of tempted to paint everything white and then do lots of oil washes and give it that weird kind of Death Guard-y look. Uh, I want it to be more you know, background, kind of rusty, so that the models stand out more than the terrain. So I, I think this is a non-option. And then we got the black. So this is black primer with uh, 
the texture paint on. Not actually a huge difference. Uh, it makes the brown a bit darker. It definitely fills in the places where the texture paint didn't hit with a darker black instead of gray. So I think it looks slightly better. And then we have this, which is just the regular darker brown primer with this on top. And again, looks pretty decent. Not a huge difference from the black. I mean, it is different, but not substantial. And then here we have the more red kind of primer. I wanted to see how much of a difference it makes. Not a huge difference between these two, really. And then this one here is actually a combination of both that I did later. I decided to grab one more and spray it with the dark brown and then kind of randomly hit it with some of the redder brown to see if it gave it more kind of variation. It kind of did, but not drastically. One thing I don't like about any of these kind of is that this sandy texture that's in it, it has some really light sandy pieces that I'm not sure I love. So that's why I went ahead on some of them and tried spraying after to kind of see how it would cover that up if you just had the texture underneath. You know what? It looks kind of decent. That's what I did on this black one. Uh, I sprayed some of it down here with the color after. I think it helps, but I'm really indecisive here. The differences are so small between everything. Spraying directly on the plastic is not the right idea. I want to put an undercoat primer on it first. So that's out. The brown undercoats do look better than the black slightly. I'm really, oh, I'm so reluctant about that. And then these two look similar. I think this dark one is Good man, this is so hard. How are we gonna paint these? The more I look at it, the more I think I'm actually inclined to go with, with the black undercoat, hit with this texture, and then come back in after with some of the reds and browns on top to cover some of those little light speckles and give it a more rusty color. <sighs> what do we do here? Black texture, brown and red highlights. I've made a little bit of a mistake. After coming in, uh, I took some of these sample pieces and I played around dry brushing them with a little bit of orange for rust and kind of really dark gunmetal metallic to highlight all the edges and actually make it look like metal again. And I did it on two different pieces. One that was more undercoated in the kind of reddish brown and one that was just that texture paint. Now looking at these, the one that was just the texture paint looks significantly better and I really don't like the reddish undertone of the other one. And unfortunately, the last step on these was using a lot of that red undertone. This just looks so much better now, so much more like old decayed metal. I think I need to do another coat on all of these with that brown texture paint to bring it back into that color. I'm gonna go get some more 
Uh, I'm going to recoat them maybe today or tomorrow uh, and then move on from there. But like this kind of sucks. However, I know it's going to make it look really good. While I clean up and wait for another coat of spray paint to dry, I'd like to tell you about the sponsor that made this week's video possible. There are two new Dungeon Craft books coming from 1985 games on Kickstarter, Fallen Kingdom and Jungles of Dread. Now, Dungeon Craft is a series of 2D terrain made for use in tabletop RPGs like Dungeons and Dragons. Each book contains hundreds of double-sided terrain elements to help you lay out for your players in your adventure. These pieces are easy to transport, easy to store, and quick set up on a gaming table, but even better is that they are wet and dry erase marker friendly, meaning you can add whatever indicator is specific to your encounter taking place that you need. This jungle setting theme was too big for just one book, so it became a set of two. And not only is this a limitless resource for overgrown jungle campaign settings, these sets also include some very iconic locations from the official Dungeons & Dragons Tomb of Annihilation campaign. In addition to the terrain pieces, you can also get some really cool themed matching 3D minis, a Game Master screen, and a cool unique adventure that is actually free for everybody and anybody to download, even if they don't back the Kickstarter. This company is really fantastic. I've worked with them several times in the past. I have some of their older Dungeon Craft books, and they've already fulfilled several successful Kickstarters for Dungeon Craft and other game aids. So this is a campaign you can trust to back. I'll put links in the video description so you can go check out this project for yourself. Thanks 1985 Games for making this video possible. Well, it's the next day. Uh, this is now starting the third day of this phase of the project. I ended up going out and buying a couple more cans of this uh, texture paint. Took everything back outside and gave <laughs> two more coats of this because I really feel like this brown tone is gonna suit the paint job much better. I still left some spots where there was that really reddish undertone. And I think it's okay if it pops out in areas. It was just too much uh, on it like previously. So this is better. now. I'm going to do the rust effects, which is just gonna be with orange craft paint. I have some much better looking pigment powder to do rust with, but I know that I'm gonna end up putting some oil washes on these. And if I do pigment powders, it's just gonna mix and run later. And at the very end, I might go in with some pigment powders, like after the washes, after everything, very last step of these builds. I don't know. It might take me all day to go through and do all of these with this rust because I want to be kind of deliberate with it. I don't want it to just be everywhere. I kind of want to try to pick out certain things that are going to be rusty. If I get through that, then I can go and dry brush all the metallics. And this is what's really going to make it pop. We'll see. I'm going to, I guess, put on a, a Mr. Ball and playlist and paint rust for the uh, rest of the day. Ha <laughs> ha. 
That was a lot of painting, but it looks awesome. I'm so pumped about how this thing is turning out. All this stuff is at the point where I could definitely just drop it on the table, play some games, and it would look pretty great. But this is a passion project. I'm in no rush to complete it, and it is far from finished. I want to continue on this. I want to pick out some elements in the pattern that I can paint out in a bronze or like a kind of coppery color to kind of go with my death guard, you know, color scheme and give me something that I can do a nice like verdigris wash on, give it some, you know, contrast. I also want to do a bunch more, you know, drippy, oily, dirty, grimy, washy effects. And I want to do some pigment powders. I have to figure out a way to deal with the rubble. Uh, usually you would just like dry brush your rubble and make it look dusty and like broken stone. But this is a little bit different because these aren't concrete buildings. They're not stone buildings, they're metal ones. And the rubble is essentially metal and other debris. So I did dry brush it you know, like with the metal, but I want to find some kind of pigment powder at the end to dust it all up. Oh, I also want to add some wiring, like some bundles of very small gauge wire coming out of a lot of these pipes. I'll, I'll add that at some point. Either way, I've made a good dent in this build. You know, it's not as big as I originally anticipated. I kind of planned originally to build more of it. But once I realized how much work goes into each piece, it didn't seem practical because this amount of stuff is more than enough to fill up any table that I'll ever play on. And it gives me a lot of options. I could add to it if I want. If I'm gonna add pieces to the set, it's gonna be stuff that's not necessarily these exact buildings. It'll be something a little bit different, like some power lines or some you know smaller walls or whatever. But here we are. Uh, I'm going to keep going on this. I think next week I'm going to continue the painting. I, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that you've been enjoying this process, this build. If you have been, hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section below. If you want to pick up any tools or supplies and support the channel in the process, be sure to do your online hobby shopping through the links on blackmagiccraft.ca. There I have my essential equipment page and I'll link to all the stuff I use and recommend and purchasing through those links gives the channel a small kickback that funds the production of videos like this. The best way, however, you can help out me and the channel and, you know, keep me doing this is by supporting the channel on Patreon. Thanks to everybody who supported me there in the past, present, and future. I would love to see new faces, new members in the Black Magic Craft Fellowship. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm really pumped. I'm probably going to keep painting uh, right away after I edit this video. Cheers.